In studio, Bob Williams from Martinsburg, Berkeley County Parks and Rec. Good morning, Bob. How are you? Doing well. Thanks, Rob, for having me out today. I appreciate you coming in. And I had accidentally blocked <laughs> Bob's number on my phone. I have no idea how I did I that. really good, yeah. I was sending Bob texts going, Bob never. Bob must not like me. I send him texts all the time. I never get a response from Bob. What's the deal? And I thought I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's when he sends you a text after 8.30 p.m., Bill doesn't doesn't uh, respond, oh, man. I get I get back from Bill a bunch of Zs. Bill's funny. I know. Yeah, right, That's right, right. where he is. 8.30 no. is too late. No too truth late. to that, Joe. I may need a lawyer right now. Oh, yeah. For Personal defamation. <laughs> Joe's not a defense attorney. He can't help you on this one. Uh, Bob, this is a big weekend. This is uh, the unofficial start of summer coming it up is. here, right? Yeah, it's 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 a busy time. It's a lot of activities going on, a lot of events. Uh, people want to get outside. You know, it's warm. Kids are out of school. We've had all these graduations, and it's like, mm-hmm. what's next? Mm-hmm. It's good to be post-COVID again. Well, that too, yeah. And we're, we're so excited. You know, we've, we've seen a lot of rebound on all our programs, even in the wintertime. People want to get be doing stuff and so a lot of our numbers rebounded really well this year and uh, we had a lot of people in all our rec centers and uh even outside you know it, we've had some nice weather this uh, early spring and uh i can tell you that uh, whether it's a uh, you know family picnic out at one of the pavilions or, or just kids playing on the new playground i mean this is packed tell me about your opening schedule for the pools uh the pools they open this weekend uh saturday uh, both pools are uh, anticipated to be open. Uh, we got our health inspection on War Memorial yesterday, so we're good to go. And uh, we're waiting for our inspection for Lambert. We have uh, um, one issue on flow there, but we're just finalizing that. We're anticipating everything be open and ready to... Might be, water might be a little cool this weekend, though, because it hasn't been real warm <laughs> out. But I don't think for most of the kids, they don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it looks really good. It looks Thanks. really good. I, I walk through um, the park almost every night. And, mm-hmm. You know, it's just sort of a harbinger of, of yeah. summer and just makes yeah. you smile when Water's you see the, the, pool. It's the water in the pool. Very nice. <laughs> is, it, uh, is there a water loss, water retention issue at Lambert Pool any longer? Uh, no, the only thing we have there is water flow. You know, we've got some old pumps. We've actually replaced one of the pumps because uh, it had some bad impellers on it. We're still not getting the flow we need to pass inspection, but, you know, we're, we're checking on that today through another company. Should be up and running a day or two. So, what about the situation with lifeguards and and um, yeah, that's that's always, always been the issue, it, it's, right? It, and that's keeping a them both open. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's always a challenge. Uh, we we're fortunate last year and again this year. You know, we hired between forty and fifty lifeguards uh, to keep both pools open between uh, open swims and the pool parties, and we have uh, senior swims in the morning and. Uh, so it takes a lot of uh, staff to keep you know, both pools open, but we've been able to hire enough people for the season. Uh, some people ask, you know, hey, you know, in August we kind of switch over to doing our open gyms just at War Memorial and not Lambert. We do do pools at Lambert in August, and the reason being is all our lifeguards go back to school, and uh, we just don't have enough staff in August to to maintain that. So, you know, Bill, you've been looking for some summer work. You got experience go. on the high seas. We'll train you. <laughs> Jumping into eight feet of water shouldn't bother you. <laughs> I, a couple of years ago, I jumped in the pool for the first time in several years, and man, you don't want me as a lifeguard. We need a lot of lifeguards around. So. I could just see Bill going, "Youngin, youngin, get out, get out, get out of that area." Oh, you know, we didn't need him anyway. Next, <laughs> That's right, next in line, turn him out of there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Bob, uh, yeah. pickleball yeah. is a big thing now. It what is. are you doing for pickleball, and how you? And yeah, and, uh, most places they have problem finding space with pickleball that would uh, cut into the sure. basketball courts mm-hmm. and the other thing. What, yeah, that? yeah. I mean, we do have a very active pickleball group down through any Smith Center in Inwood. Uh, they're there th- at least three days a week mm-hmm. in the morning from like eight to one, waiting in line for mm-hmm. uh, for the courts that we have on their basketball indoor. Uh, we have had uh, two years of. Uh, pickleball tournaments down there and it's been great we are looking to expand uh and put uh hopefully we're in design right now for some pickleball courts within one of the parks in the city here and i know that uh as we talk more about uh, potentially the new park opening in inwood uh there's pickleball courts going in out there as well so it's just everything's in design right now it takes a little bit of time to get there yeah how many courts do you have just now uh, indoor, we can put four on uh, okay. the front courts, and if we need to expand, we actually during the tournaments we had eight uh, down inside the Randy Smith Center. 
Well, the interest in pickleball has grown so fast, yes. mm-hmm. and it's uh, the re- the availability of pickleball pickleball courts mm-hmm. are a problem in many areas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it because it has grown so fast, you know, yeah. and and uh, it's gone twenty plus percent over the last five years, year over year. I mean, it's a sport that started back yeah. in the mid '60s, but yeah. just in recent time, I think yeah. uh, everybody with those uh, old uh, football or other sports injuries are going. <laughs> I still want to play, but not as intensely as like tennis. You know, and this is kind of the the play. The thing, the sport to get involved with, yeah, and, sure. and it's uh, really encouraging to see that. It's wildly popular. It's extremely popular. Mm-hmm. In, in about 2000, the average age was about 60, and everybody thought it was an old person's sport, but older person's sport. And uh, now, hey, uh, hey, 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 older, be huh? careful about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I try, try to catch myself there. Uh, but now, the average age is. Um, well, as of 2021, it was down to 40, and it's dropping because I see more schools even having mm-hmm. pickleball uh, for their students. So it's it's becoming more popular. It's easy sport to get into as well. Mr. Ferretti. Bob, uh, an area of the county that's always been near and dear to my heart is Poorhouse Farm Park. Mm-hmm. And I understand there was a new trail established out yeah. there and uh, perhaps even plans for additional expansion. Yeah, the county purchased an additional 70 acres last year. And Congratulations on that, by the way. Yeah. I know that was not easy. Right. Uh, it was an expensive piece of property there. Yeah, it was on the north side. And we thank the county for, for the foresight and making the yes. intentional commitment yes. to do that. Uh, and we did include that in our master plan, which we adopted last December. You know, there's a lot of new things we're hoping to accomplish over the next 10 years. But most recently, just to get access and let people see what a beautiful parcel that is, we put in actually two trails. We just did the ribbon cutting uh, recently, uh, last week, in fact. And we've got what I call the East Meadow Trail, which is kind of going around the, the, the meadow areas on the east side of the Tuscarora Creek. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, that's about three quarters of a mile. And on the west side, we've got two loops. Uh, around some meadows and forest areas there, and that's about a mile and a quarter. So we opened up two miles of trails out there recently, and we even had some people hiking with us that day. So we know it's already popular, and we think more people will enjoy it as they get out to summertime. And, and the disc golf course out there is being maintained. I, I take it. I know oh, yeah. that was established a couple of years ago, and, and oh yeah, we've I, got. I, some, I often see people out there playing disc golf. Yeah, we've got a great group uh, that comes out here frequently. Uh, a great group of volunteers that helps us mm-hmm. maintain it. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, mow, of course, the trails. You know, um, they're in the wooded area, so we had, we do that ourselves. Um, and, and this year, everything is. Gr- if you know your yard, I mean, it's everything's growing like crazy this year. Between the all the rain we've gotten recently, and now we've gotten a little sunshine, and it just pops. But uh, in fact, I think we're coming out there this Friday to help maintain the trails, getting ready for. I think there's a disc golf tournament, believe it or not, next mm-hmm. week. So uh, we're getting ready for that. But Bob, they're very active, and, yeah. and the volunteers are great. One of the problems uh, uh, you've had in the past mm-hmm. has been your land poor. In other words, you've been donated more land than you have money to develop and mm-hmm. maintain. Is that still the case? We're doing a lot more. We, we've been fortunate. Um, if one good thing came out of COVID is we received some additional monies uh, to help maybe develop or maintain uh, properties that we've had. We haven't done anything with for a while. For example, uh, we have there's 10 acre property that's uh, actually school board property that we're able to develop, um, and we're actually hoping to break ground on that really soon here. Uh, as I mentioned, the county bought some land uh, across the high school down in Inwood. Uh, across from Musselman that uh, we're in design right now uh, and, and hopefully break ground on that this fall. Uh, and that would be a multi-phase project because that's pretty big, pretty expensive. Um, and you're, even things like Rooney Park, which is uh, on, on Back Creek Valley Road, which, you know, um, you kind of forget about those that are over the mountain. Uh, we've been able to uh, put a lot of money into, you know, for water and electric. We're getting ready to put in a uh, playground, some trails out there. It's a 17-acre parcel besides the two ball fields we have out there. So we're, we're picking the speed up of, of providing more amenities in some of these facilities that we haven't had in the past. Now, Poor House Farm uh, is somewhat unique. Mm-hmm. Do all the other parks uh, have uh, basically the same footprint, same utilization? Uh, Similar. They're all they're similar. I mean, uh, Poor House is certainly unique. Uh, over at, um, like I guess at Rooney has two ball fields. Uh, we have a soccer complex at Dupont up in uh, Spring Mills Falling Water area. So they're kind of keyed toward that area. But I will let you know that as our community is expanding, we're looking at can we pr- or do we need to provide additional facilities? You know, playground, dog park, and other amenities that we aren't seeing right now because people are starting to ask for them. Mm-hmm. Bob, tell me about the breakfast. 
It's always a big part of the Memorial Day weekend. It, it is, and uh, happy to uh, share that information. Uh, the, it's the Noon Rotary Club that has the Pancakes for Polio breakfast this Monday morning, 8.30 to 10.30. They're at the main stage area uh, at, uh, at War Memorial Park. Uh, come bring your family out. It's it's a great and, and being a couple Rotary members in this room, uh, it's a great way to support your community because Rotary turns that money back around and supports the community. And then right at eleven o'clock, right after the breakfast, we are having the Memorial Day service that we do every year. Uh, it's going to be led by many of our local um, veteran service groups that are in the area: uh, DAR, uh, VF, VFW, American Legion, and others. So we're excited to uh, sponsor that again. Are you serving the uh, similar breakfast fair again this yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not involved in that planning per se, but uh, it's similar as what they've had in the past. I know there's flyers out. I didn't bring one today, but I know it's uh, it's up and around the community. And um, steak, ham, eggs, toast. Coffee. That's, that's, that's Labor Day. That's Labor Day. Oh, that's breakfast. Labor. That's yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You yeah. got the wrong breakfast. I got the wrong there, breakfast. Right? That's that's just, the Labor Day. This so. one is pancake, pancake sausage. Um, yeah, and and mm. it's. Um, What's beautiful about it is it is free. It's yes. billed as a free mm -hmm. breakfast, unlike the one at um, Labor Day, which, which you pay a, fi a, right. a fine, a fee, fee. and um, you know that goes directly to Parks and Rec. Right. This is a, a Rotary project that we raise money um, based on donations. Um, so you got a big old jar, and mm -hmm. you put in what you think your breakfast is worth plus some yep. and um and then uh the rotary club the martinsburg noon rotary mm -hmm. club turns that around gives back to the um to the to parks and rec um yep. as a result of that so very nice yeah it's it's a, it's a great event and as long as the weather holds up it's not too windy or too wet we're also um Parks and Rec was a, uh, able to be a recipient of the uh, Rotary Grant this year uh, for some pop-up programming, inflatable games and stuff. We're going to have those out there for the kids as well. What's on your flyers there? <laughs> we just got so much going on this year. Real quickly, our summer concert series. I know a lot of people like coming to that. That kicks off June 15th, goes for 10 weeks through August 17th. Our first group is Cashmere. I know it's one of the more popular mm -hmm. events. What day are you going to be? Um, that's, these are Thursday nights starting at 7 o'clock. We usually run from 7 to 8.30. Got to get my walk in before then. Yeah, there you go. Uh, get, <laughs> it's at the War Memorial main stage area. Uh, so just, just listen up. People You'll... line up at like 5.30. Oh. They got their oh, little got chars. Their seat. Gotta get yeah, their seat. yeah, they gotta got get their, their little chairs and all of that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my gosh. Concessions open. Mini golf's open if you want to get around in before you know the concert starts. That's uh, going to be exciting. Uh, June Jubilee, we're having our 35th annual June Jubilee wow. this year, at, if you can believe that. Uh, June 11th, uh, Sunday from 11 to 5. This is again at War Memorial. Where we have kids games, Uncle Bean. Uh, we have miniature horses in the petting zoo. We've got arts and crafts vendors and big case car shows coming back out for that. That's always very popular. Uh, and again, we'll have some a lot of fun games for that. And starting, if you can believe it, June 5th, which is just right around the corner, is the start of our 10-week adventure summer camp. Uh, day camp series so this year we've got if you go to our website or social media we've got uh, each week is themed this year so our staff has really been been stepping up for that you know so we've got you know summer bash week we've got explore nature week you know under the big top week we've got a lot of different things uh, for kids to do this summer because you want to keep busy right absolutely <laughs> well and it is uh, those time. are great programs again my kids are way beyond that age sure, yeah. but every you know they would look at at mm -hmm. what was up for that particular week of the summer and we right. certainly participated in that lots of good programming and has yeah. been for a long time yeah and then this year we're also doing the second annual uh, Cullery Berkeley 5k color run at Poor House it, for the first year last year we had 260 some people out i mean it was very popular and we're looking to make it even better this year explain so. what a color run is for, for those that don't know what yeah. a color run is and uh, without pictures it's hard to see but you know it's Think of a 5K, okay, you got to run through a course, but at certain stations throughout that, we have these colors that get thrown up in the air and the runners run through them. So they're, when they so end up- come out at, looking like a rainbow. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It, the last year we used the, you know, the blue and gold colors. This year we're going to expand those colors. Um, and people just love that. I mean, people come from a <laughs> wide area to run through- It's a, a lot of fun. A, a color dust, you know, it's just coming through and it sticks to your sweat and everything, so. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very uh, nice. Bob, Rob, want, maybe we should do that. Maybe. It'd be kind of fun to there see you, you in yeah. color. 
I'm, living color. I'm too old to run. <laughs> I know. We could we could walk really quickly. I could walk. Yeah. We, you can do that. Color walk. <laughs> color color walk. walk. There yeah. you go. Bob, one of our um, uh, listeners asked, when will the senior water aerobics <laughs> class begin? Well, that, those are great events. We're doing uh, Monday through Fridays while the pool's open at both pools locations. They're from 11 to 12. And uh, slightly different at Lambert Pool, it's kind of a water aerobics where we have an instructor. You're welcome to attend and participate at any level that you feel comfortable with, but it, it's, it's only for seniors. And uh, at War Memorial, it's kind of more of an open senior swim. And we also invite uh, those with disabilities when they're caretakers to come in for free and, and participate in the pool. That starts that right after Memorial Day then? Yes, it does. So that first week in June yeah, then? The first okay. Tuesday, yeah. Okay. I like how Bill couched his interest in that class by saying, an interested senior in our audience. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. yeah. yeah which, I, which one was it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mentioned earlier the way I swim, Rob. <laughs> I'm not sure I can handle the aerobics. <laughs> yeah, we do it in the shallow end so you can stand up. Very shallow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for a, for a captain of a ship, Bill, <laughs> a little disappointed in your water abilities. Well, the, uh, if you have to jump out in deep water, <laughs> it doesn't do you much good anyway. <laughs> you know, a lot of the uh, the folks, Portugal and uh, Newfoundland and the like, uh, the fishermen never learned how to swim. Interesting. It, hmm. Because cold water, they might as well get it over with quickly. So uh, the, the vast majority of these dory fishermen could not swim. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. Yes. Well, we do have swimming lessons as well. Folks. <laughs> and it's never too late, Bill. <laughs> never too late. <laughs> I would pay to watch that. In I fact, do, if you put me on the sideline, I'll come and watch you take swim lessons. I used to be a good swimmer. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not that I haven't swum. I used to swim a great deal, but uh -huh. not recently. Okay. We're at the age where we used to do a lot of things. <laughs> exactly. No. Exactly, right. Amen. Oh, exactly right. Amen. <laughs> Maria hasn't admitted it yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm right, right here right now. That funny side story i took a water aerobics class when i was in antigua and typically you have this vision of you know i've taken classes before and they're generally very low impact very right. controlled that kind of thing this guy was this jamaican dancer and <laughs> like halfway through i was like whoa um, and he said, and this is funny because it was an all-inclusive resort, and he's like, who needs a cocktail? And I'm like, raising my hand. <laughs> then I looked, and it was like 10.30 in the morning. I'm like, well, maybe not quite now. but you you're, on, you're on break vacation. You're in Antigua. Why not? Why not? Why not? Bob, is the Parks and Rec model still very much a user fee model financially? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, uh, we're very unique in that aspect where 60% of our revenue is generated revenue. In other words, we charge for our activities, uh, you know, trying to get some cost recovery on that. The national average for Parks and Rec on generated revenue is 23%. So we're more than double that, and it's done intentionally so that we can do more and not have as great of impact on the local um, tax base to, to provide those services. Now that the former director is a county council member, he we is? made that change in, uh, in, in some ways. <laughs> I don't know, but Steve is as nice to see Steve out there and, and – uh, uh, I know that we're working closely on the new park development down in Inwood, and uh, it's, it's good to see that, that type of activity happening. Uh, about a minute left to go. Anything else you want to tell our listeners and viewers about this summer? Uh, a lot or of our, this weekend? Yeah, well, a lot of our clinics are, are filling up, but we still have a few things available. Our, our dance, soccer uh, camps are still uh, have some space available. Kids and, did all of those, too. Yep, <laughs> and uh, Vicki Bullitt is doing some girls' basketball clinics. Uh, she's doing Been three there, of those, <laughs> and we still have a few spaces left. So make sure <clears> to <throat> sign up and, and uh, get out. We have something for everybody. And one thing coming up is we're going to be doing movie nights again this year. So oh, ah, starting awesome. into June, we'll have some movie nights out of Poor House Under the Stars. Bob, thanks for coming in, man. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thanks, Bob.